What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sonic Attack once again, and welcome to part four of the QuakeCon PC mod, which is now dropping Warframe completely from its title for a few reasons. When we get back, we'll redo it and put all the parts that are coming in later. I went and checked essentially and found out that my coolant got delayed till Friday. QuakeCon starts on Thursday. We'll be leaving Wednesday or very early Thursday, so there's no way I'm going to get that. I can't get my hands a hold of it, so we're just going with red. Uh, Mayhem's red dye, but that's uh, in the future. Last time we left off, of course, with the cable management on the rear, which we ended up not exactly doing. We needed a cable extension and some stuff like that. And then once we finished that up, we went ahead and filled the loop so you guys can take a look at that. Once again, this is kind of a weird vlog because I kind of started getting into rush mode. I tried to take as much B-roll and shots as I could to fill this out to show you guys what we did here. The thing that kind of messed up is if you guys didn't notice, we actually ended up over time, which I definitely, you can tell in the last video, we were using the, the, the tube on all of it. And so it shouldn't have collapsed, but while we were putting everything together, the rear line in the front uh, collapsed on the bottom where we did the 180, and I didn't have enough tubing to redo that line, so it just went to a basic 90, so it comes straight out and straight up. Not super happy with that, but at the same time, sometimes that's just what happens. The build is together and the loop is together, and we're up and running, so here's filling the loop. Okay, so once we got the loop filled, we installed Windows 10 and started troubleshooting. We, well, I say troubleshooting. We started to see if we could run IDA 64, even with stressing the GPU, just as a basic test to get everything out of the way before overclocking, and it was taking a crap. Once we unchecked stressed GPU, it ran fine. So I went ahead and downloaded and installed the 3D Mark Fire Strike test and ran that and the score was only 10,000. At stock, these things score between 13 and 14,000 and on water should be fine. Checking the temperatures on load, which while running Fire Strike, and we'll get into a little bit more here, but while running Fire Strike, the GPU was only getting to 35C. So I was like, that's super cool. Uh, so I pulled up hardware info and checked the VRMs, which was running at 50 degrees Celsius, and I was just lost. So I started to go into super panic mode, not thinking things through. The only changes we had made to the Fury Nano, of course, was the water block. So we're going to get into that in a second. I did the wrong thing, which was not re-verify everything with the water block installation, but I went ahead 
and started taking a look at everything else. We pulled up MSI Afterburner with, of course, Reva Tuner statistics, and we noticed that the GPU clock was dropping all the way down to 500 megahertz and then bouncing between 518. So it was 500 and 800, which means it was definitely thermal throttling. If you guys see this happening on a Fiji card though, you know that this is something that happens with various AMD drivers. So I went into the let's try different AMD drivers, which didn't work. After trying three and going all the way back to 16 dot whatever, we decided to install Windows 8. Very poor decision, but we wasted some time installing Windows 8.1, which uh, there's free keys all over the internet. First page of Google, by the way, if you just need to get it to install for testing, which is what I was doing to clarify. We're not running it. We already have a Windows 10 license over here. But we went ahead and installed Windows 8.1 and womp, same problem. So at this point, I start looking into the BIOS settings and so on. I'm like, I, I'm so frustrated. And so we took a look at the manual again and it didn't like, the thermal pads were from my best memory correct compared to the one that Bicycle sent me. So I was like, I really don't know. So I went and started looking up some YouTube videos and I found two little modules that I needed to put some thermal pads on. Once I started looking up the YouTube videos, I'll try to link a couple of them down here. Interestingly enough, some YouTube videos will actually put some thermal pads on areas uh, depending on which block it is that you don't need to put them on and we'll get to that too. So we took the water block off and we followed the video that had the most uh, thermal pad placement on it. And we followed that to a T. We added the two that we were missing. We put the water black block back on, refilled the loop. Oh my goodness, refilled the loop, booted it up, same problem. So I start looking at, at other ones and I finally found a picture of one with a guy doing it with a, a watercool.de, I think it's a heat killer. It's on the, it's not a heat killer, but it's on the same brand. And I noticed that basically the modules that were not like VRMs or, or memory chips or anything like that were not getting covered on them. So I kind of looked at the, the bottom of the block and I kind of noticed the block wasn't sitting quite level, but I just figured it just needed to kind of maybe, I don't know, I thought Chinese, maybe it just the tolerances were bad, but there's little cutouts around those sections. So I just pulled the thermal pads off of there and I'll throw a final picture of for these blocks, uh, what the, that thermal pad placement looks like. But once we removed those additional thermal pads and put the GPU block back on, we just installed it. We got a, almost a 15,000 uh, completely stock, no, no BIOS or anything like that on it. Uh, on Firestrike, we are running at 945 megahertz on the core clock, so, which is a common problem. It doesn't always go to a thousand, by the way. We'll, we'll be working on fixing that here shortly. I had reverted back to the stock BIOS, so now I gotta go dig up the, the old uh, gaming BIOS I had on it, and I'm probably gonna try to find a water-cooled one. All that being said, we're good to go now. We just need to hop on some overclocking, which I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna just try to hook it into uh, the capture card and probably do a really fast, like here's our overclocking. We did uh, overclock the CPU. We kind of already knew where it was gonna be at. This one just hits a wall at 4.1. Meaning like I cannot throw voltage higher. I can't do anything. We have SOC at 1.2. We have core at 1.45. The Ryzen 7 2700 is running super cool. It's like 30C and maybe I think it hit like 48C during Cinebench. We haven't run IDA on it yet, of course, which we'll be doing here soon, but it's at 4.1 gigahertz and the memory is no problem. XMP profile at 3200 megahertz. So it's running great. You'll be seeing benchmarks, I'm sure at the end of this, but let's get into overclocking. Okay, so first of all, the things that we need to do is come in here and go to 100%. Now, the particular card, the R9 Nano, does not have HDMI 2.0. 
and I have an HDMI capture card, so we're gonna be at 1920 by 1080, but we can use some super resolution if we wanna test some different titles. I have the latest uh, Encore Wo World of Tanks engine to test here. Uh, we have some of the basics such as, uh, what do we got here, local, of course, 3D Mark, we got Ashes of the Singularity, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, and Warframe. I would like to have Far Cry 5. I did get it on a really good deal for my Xbox One X, so I played that game over there, and that is why I currently uh, do not actually possess it on PC, but that's a really good built-in quick benchmark that I need to pick up. I do have Rise of the Tomb Raider and some other stuff like that, but right now we're really focused on trying to overclock um at at this point what i can tell you is we need a windows update so we're going to restart this and get that final update and then we're going to run ida 64 for 20 minutes on the current settings and make sure we're stable okie dokie so i'm just going to make sure we have no more here that we need to worry about good there um now we have the latest hardware monitor that supports ryzen I'm going to change when these notifications appear because I don't like them. Uh, we have the latest support for Ryzen, so we're going to go ahead and get this looked at. Let's kind of close all of this out. Well, we won't be using it anyways. Uh, I really am curious on, as you can see, we're a little bit over. It's that line load being so high. So we want temperatures. Yes, we want temperatures on that as well. 1.44 temps power not worried not worried not worried right now as you can see though on the clocks we are at 4.1 all core overclock on the Ryzen 7 2700 uh, we have the memory here we're gonna close those out not super salty about that the drive i will say is placed really poorly i had to pull the whole motherboard out again actually after we did the loop to go ahead and put it in because it sits below so it, it runs kind of hot i won't lie because of it being kind of stuck under there there's no way to get airflow over it because it's a mini itx board so it's on the bottom voltages there and our GPU temps. We did drop our idle GPU temps, maybe 2C. We did reapply thermal paste. I'm running super low on it, so we're running some EK thermal paste of all things. So we have two things in this PC that are EK now. The EK fans on the front, which I love because they're super quiet for the amount of air they push, and but they're ugly, so covering up on the front is good. And then now we have EK thermal paste on the GPU block, which is, is not is not that terrible of a deal. So we're going to see if we can get through Ida 64 for 20 minutes. With GPU, I'm not going to... Yes. I'm not going to worry about stressing the local disks. And we're going to go. Fingers crossed, guys. This would crash it every time after like 10 seconds or so getting rowdy okay we're past the 10 second mark thank goodness all right I'll let this run and we'll see you guys in a bit okie dokie so now i'm going i'm starting to get a little concerned with clocks i'm going to see if we are we are throttling on the cpu as you can see here and the cpu temperature is crawling up so we're going to stop this and take a look at a couple things Okie dokie, so you guys probably saw there that we were running a little hot on the Ryzen 7 2700. This is actually going to be pretty simple. I already know we can turn the voltages down, so we're going to try to do that as well. But uh, the next thing that I wanted to show you guys here um, is if you look back here on the loop, because we've filled and drained this so much, we actually have a little air bubble in the CPU up there on that top corner. So we're going to uh, shake it out. Shake it, shake, shake it, shake it, shake, shake it. Now we're just gonna turn it upside down, right side up and every which way possible. We could also, I'm not gonna fill this up. Never fill this up all the way, by the way, guys, until all of your air bubbles are out. Oh, it makes it really hard to get your air bubbles out. Just a quick tip. Okay, so that was just a quick one and we have the bubble out. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the voltage down a tad and then retest. 
So just getting the air bubble out helped a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead and drop voltages so we can stay a little bit better. I don't think that this is reading exactly correct. Both of these are kind of bouncing all over the place, but we haven't throttled anymore. So that portion's fixed, but I want the temps a little lower. So we're gonna tweak in the voltage real quick. Okay, so this uh, system, unfortunately, the Fury, even with the BIOS patch from AMD, doesn't support BIOS UFI. So I have to, the Elgato won't capture it for some reason. Well, I guess it supports it, but for some reason, the Elgato can't interpret the uh, signal. So I, I can't record the voltage changes, but we are at 1.4 volts, still left the SOC at 1.2. And we're gonna run IDA hopefully for 20 minutes this time okie dokie so we're throttling again so i am going to go adjust the voltages anymore i'm going to drop the soc to 1.1 first and see what that does and then we'll go from there Alrighty, so after some tweaking and getting the air bubbles out of the CPU block, we still had to drop the overclock down to 4 gigahertz at 1.35 volts. At that, you know, we're staying under the 84C. It's pretty disappointing. I don't think I can really blame the water block though. I think what we can blame here is the gigabyte motherboard. As you can see here, these VRM temperatures are out of control. It is a mini ITX motherboard, so it is what it is, but we're at like 110C and 120C on the VRMs. It's not good. Uh, this is just what we're gonna have to deal with. Aw awesomely enough though, the GPU is nice and cool at like 47C. And that's running 20 minutes, just the IDA 64 test, but that means that what we're probably gonna do it looks like the BDCC temp is 72. That's still probably way in check. We're gonna be able to overclock that, so we're gonna get to work on that now. Okay, so right now I have basically the ROMs that they kind of, I don't know, the offsets ROM and the offset plus Tmod ROM. We're gonna try the Tmod ROM, which probably won't do anything because we are on the latest AMD drivers, but we're going to just run it and see how it rolls. Uh, so in downloads here, I have ATI flash. We're just going to run as admin, which it doesn't appear to be letting me do. We're going to try a reboot. All right guys, so we are going to grab the core blocker download because we are still having some fluctuating core clocks. This is pretty common with, of course, the R9 series. We have perfectly normal Fire Strike scores, but they're very stock. The BIOS mod really didn't do much for us. So at this point, what we're gonna do is just get core blocker installed, and then we're going to do a couple things. We're gonna go into MSI Afterburner and we are going to enable the, we're gonna disable ULPS, we're gonna unlock core voltage, unlock voltage monitoring, and force constant voltage. You guys could see earlier probably that we were still at like 37C. So we're gonna restart, and then we're gonna enable core blocker, and that should get us at a constant 945 megahertz, and then we'll try to overclock above that.
Oh yeah, that looks good. All right, boys, that's what I was looking for. We are over 16,000 on the graphics score, which is just awesome for Fire Strike. We had to use the core uh, unlocker or core blocker, clock blocker, clock blocker. There you go. Maybe we can do a separate how to on this for you guys later, but the basic will work. You can just right click quick actions, go back to down clocking while you're sitting around when you want a game come in and block it and as you guys saw we were staying above 900 megahertz now finally the whole time so the next step is going to be overclocking this thing uh, so we're going to start messing with the clock right here i know for a fact 1070 will work so maybe we try to bump it a little higher we have the voltage about as high as we can go Memory clock, uh, the adrenaline drivers blocked it. Super not cool of AMD to do because you used to be able to overclock the HBM to about a thousand and it was badass, but you can't do that now. They block it. Um, so if we're running Windows 10, we're not gonna be able to do that. And I need to run Windows 10 for a few different applications that we're gonna be running out at QuakeCon. So unfortunately, that's just the name of the game right now. We would also have to go back to previous drivers. It wouldn't have support for the latest games and it's just a mess. It's a mess, AMD. I don't know why you did that to us. We're gonna save this one as profile two and we're gonna start messing with it. We should see it bump. It doesn't look like it's bumping for us though. So, huh. Um, might have to go into our BIOS editor and actually edit it. Let's try to unblock. Looks like the core blocker is taking over. So let's, uh, let's go into settings and add an offset. Let's add an offset of 70. And we'll use it here because that'll be easy. Yes, I'm sure. And let's close Afterburner and reopen it and see if it starts getting what we want maybe it won't take over yeah this is weird because it's it doesn't seem to be applying it anywhere ULPS is done um let's give it a run and see if it comes up or not we are definitely getting higher clocks we're still dropping below a thousand here and there which is a little disappointing but it seems to be much higher than it was so after this we'll go ahead and see if we can bump it up even higher i'm not sure with 100 plus 100 millivolts without going into the bios and messing with stuff how much higher we can go there used to be a bios mod that i could run that would put this up, put those clocks up pretty much permanently. And it has been pulled down because it also had the HBM mod on it. All right, so we definitely got some more points out of that, which I was expecting, but it's not quite where I need it. Um, what we're gonna have to do now, so that's what, 1070? I, I really need that BIOS mod. I don't know if I'll ever find it. Let's go ahead and bump the offset up. Let me Google, like, I don't know. Let me Google R9 Nano overclock. R9 Nano over overclock on water. Bam. Oh, these guys are not helpful. I don't have the coil wine anymore. That's been fixed. I really, really wish... I could find the stupid BIOS for this. R9 Nano water cooled BIOS. Let's see if that comes up at all. It's like nothing good, dude. <sighs> this one got taken down. That was two years ago. So that was back before the deal too. Um, because I believe this guy here, let me look at this guy again. Uh, where was it? This one, he had an R9 nano water, oh, son of a biscuit. 
that was 16669. So, I mean, we're pretty close to that, to be honest. Uh, but that file's been taken down. Um, so, we have the official AMD one already on here. Well, no, we have the one from Homeboy. So, I think let's just uh, set the core clock even higher. Well, no, let's go look at what he was clocked at. That's what we want to look at. Cancel. Because I know we can hit that clock. Uh, history. Well, we were around here somewhere, and then we just searched R9 Nano. BIOS. You can pull his up. And I believe it was this one right here. Result details, detail. No, we need uh, 1100 on the core clock. 545 on the memory. We're not going to be able to hit that because we can't modify that anymore. And let's just do this. Results. Fire Strike R9 Nano. And that was a graphic score of 17825. Memory, we won't be able to hit 1162 on the memory, which would be 162 megahertz overclock. Let's go ahead and try it. This could crash us pretty bad, though. But let's go plus 150. Confirm. Yes, I'm sure. Benchmarks. Fire strike, run. Okay, that obviously didn't apply. So let's try to redo this. We don't want to apply with Windows right now. Let's see if we can, if we apply it in both, it seems to work. It doesn't work, well then, I guess we're SOL. Uh, at this point, I think I'm going to go with the ATI editor, BIOS editor. And we're going to try to fix it that way. This one right here. And we are going to open the Nano ROM pack that we are running. We are going to pop on over here and force this to 1150. Luckily, this has a dual BIOS mode. We're going to force this to... What was his settings again on Reddit? Does anybody remember? He had TDP at 400 and he had 260 amps and he had the wattage to 250. And we're just going to force 1150 on the overclock and probably tank everything. Uh, possibly, possibly. Uh, crash. <laughs> Possibly crash. All right, so let's do that. And then let's run downloads, ATI flash, run as admin, load image, downloads, uh, ROM pack, possibly crash ROM program. Fingers crossed. Well, we can boot into Windows. So worst case, we can reflash. So that's good. Thought I set that to uh, start with thing. I guess not. Clock blocker. All right. Let's see where we're at now. Let's see if that will force it. Temps is not our problem. That is for damn sure. Ooh yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> okay, we crashed. But that's pretty good. Maybe we can get to 11:25. Alrighty, so we know that BIOS is good, so we're going to save it real quick, and then we're just going to rename it um, to downloads, rename, and then we're going to see if we can bump it up to 1125 again. It might have been that voltage though. Locking that voltage in might have been what it did, and I really wish I would have tried it both ways. Um, but let's try to bump it up. So let's bump up to 1125. Save. Possibly crash ROM. Let's try that. It's nice that it just automatically detects that. So Afterburner sees this right away. 
I wonder if Core Unlocker sees it right away. It does not. Core Clock Blocker. I don't know why I keep calling it the wrong thing. That's a hard no. So it definitely is the clock. I don't know if we can go any more up with the clock, but I think at this point I'm happy with I'm happy with where we got to. I don't know if we could. Um, I'll just Google it. Um, R9. We're definitely not too hot, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, I don't think these these guys aren't really going for crazy overclocks. Let's see if anybody's done 1.3 volts. I mean, I'm cool with going up to, or to HBM clocking, though. I'm fine with bumping volta voltage a little bit more. All right, let's try to bump to... Uh, try to bump to 1150 again I'm gonna go do 1165 we're gonna go for gold we're gonna go for 1165 as I am uh, I'm a greedy bastard just leave it I mean, this doesn't really do anything it definitely already sees that so we'll just get the core blocker in here and set that to plus 1165. Ooh, no, plus 165. Whoo! Whoo! Yes. I wish we could get 1165 out of that. How badass would that be? Okay. Oh, I'm so excited. I wonder how far up in voltage we can go. An error occurred. 3D Mark's been doing this and I have to reboot and then it fixes it can't I set this to start with Windows or something start with Windows uh, and then start up can we please disable disable that disable that disable that disable that thank you there we go yes okay hell yeah that's at 1165 Let's try to push a little bit more. Let's bump up to, I don't know, 11, we go up 10 at a time or 15 at a time, 1180. We could get real greedy. I wanna see if I can just leave this alone now and just have the core blocker low. That's a no-go. Okay, cool. Let's see if it recovers. Okay, so I think I'm satisfied with the 1165. I don't think we're going to try to push any further. Um, the Going above 1.3 would require some actual physical changes that we would have to do to the board as far as resistors and so on. So I think at this point we're just going to run ATI flash and load in our 1175 or 1165 rom right here and call it a day so boys we just broke the fire strike record for an r9 fury nano i'm pretty sure here um yeah we did we totally did um let me, let me open this in a new window. But if we go to Firestrike R9 Nano, and then we do a single GPU search. Oops, R9 Nano. And we search. I don't know how we say uh, GPU scores only, but the top score here is 17825. Now he's running a 5960 CPU, which is probably what's kind of holding us back here from taking number one spot. Our overall is what though? 15753. So we're number three overall. Look at that. Okay, so this build is pretty much done, but because we did just beat the R9 Nano world record on Hardware Bot and our number three overall, just short of like a 5960X and a 7700K in Firestrike, I'm gonna grab the best memory I own, 
which is actually in my 2400G build, which also uh, holds a couple a couple APU records. I'm gonna pull this out and throw it in over here, and uh, because the CAS latency is 14 on this particular memory, and over there it's 15. They're both 3200 megahertz, but I'm gonna see if it'll help. Alrighty, so the Flare X did not work. It's interesting that installing the Flare X required me to reduce the overclock on the GPU to get it to perform the same. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. I didn't mess with it more like loosening the timings up. The memory we still have in there is the Corsair Dominator Platinum clocked at 3200 megahertz with a 15 CAS latency at 1.2 volts. So it is a lower voltage of course, than the Flare X, which runs at a 1.35 volts. I don't know if I would have bumped that up either if that would have helped, but I figured it wasn't really worth it because we already broke uh, both the Time Spy as well as the Fire Strike uh, scores on Hardware Bot. So you guys can click over to my profile, I'll try to leave it in the description below. I still need to go submit some more for the Ryzen uh, 5 2400G. I haven't really gone ham with overclocking it because we need to pull the chip out and delit it, which you, <laughs> vlog style tangent. Okay, vlog style tangent. I have this from D Bauer right there. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, the build turned out great, of course. I'm super happy with it. As you can see, it looks good. It's performing well. The biggest downsides, these fans don't change color. For whatever reason, they will not change color. I turned everything else to red, and like, even though the lighting doesn't work great for y'all here because of the way the camera captures it, I'll try to get some better shots, but it still looks okay with just those as blue, so I'm okay with that. The news on the GPU was essentially, like I said earlier, we needed to put the block on correctly, which there's no instructions anywhere. I might try to work on a video or at least a, a quick article for people on installing that Biseki block or however that's pronounced. Nobody's told me still yet. We'll let this keep running. I'm not gonna put any more fluid into it to fill it all the way up until we get some more uh, air out of the system. I'm sure there's some sneaky air in there somewhere, even though it's been running for like 24 hours. I'm happy with all of the bends except for this one up here, which was the last tidbit of leftover. And you can see it got nicked a little bit. I'm not even sure how that happened, to be honest with you, but it's nicked. You can't really tell unless you get really, really close. And then this bend right here has a little bit of a warp right there. It's a twist, actually, not a warp. But like I said, it's about a five foot. I mean, it's not even a five foot. It's like a two to three foot mod. So all the rest of the bends came out really clean. This came out about as perfect as I could want it. Uh, so did that one, so did that one back there, and the rest of this bend looks good, and of course this 90 is fine as well, so um, I think it turned out really well. A quick note on the amount of radiator capacity we have. These are thins, and we I did have a discussion with somebody like, you don't need that much for this system. I, I agree on the GPU side. I'm thinking... I really need to get in on that 2700 and see what the hell's going on. I think, like I said earlier, it appears to primarily be an issue with the VRMs on the Gigabyte motherboard. Um, what I might do if I decide to keep this together is I had a lot better of luck, but I'd hate to take it out of this one. But there's my 2500G, there's Raven. I'll link that video up for you guys to check out. And then we will come back for the final vlog later, which will be the benchmark. So if there's a game you wanna see benchmarked, let me know in the comment section below. If I don't own it, I won't be able to benchmark it. So like Far Cry 5 is out, I'd like to buy it, but I got to pay for QuakeCon and that is not cheap. All that being said, I am glad you guys came along the journey with me. I hope you learned some stuff. If you guys have anything to teach me, let me know. I'm super excited that we have the, the fastest, uh, I guess, daily R9 Nano. I almost said Fury. R9 Nano out there. So it is, to give you guys an idea, 
It's an 18,588 score on Fire Strike. It's stable in DirectX 12 as well with Time Spy. We need to test some games to make sure it's all stable across, you know, multiple platforms. Of course, AMD has some driver issues that might make that a little bit difficult to be exactly sure that it's the overclock. However, you know, it is beating a stock GTX 1070, no problems. It's pretty much, you know, it's faster than, of course, like the Fury X at the same time and all of that. It's faster than the RX 580. If you can pick them up, they're fun, tons of fun to tinker with. Just the things that suck is you got to use the core, uh, the, the core blocker, core blocker, clock blocker. Golly, there we go. You got to use clock blocker to get that to maintain, of course, the clock. It will run just fine without it, but if you want the best performance, get the core or the clock blocker and then make sure you go ahead and get all the utilities to flash. I am happy to report that Windows 10 1803 works with the latest ATI flash. Just make sure you aren't messing with the memory. Unfortunately, if you mod the memory, you will get uh, essentially kicked out of the latest Radeon drivers, which is gonna hurt you for some later titles. But I'll let you guys know how the Fury uh, performs of course in the latest titles as well and if it's even worth you know if you can pick one up used for a good price is it even worth picking something else up thanks for watching i'll see you next tuesday